Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. Today, we're back to our regularly scheduled content. It's a pretty exciting game today, so let's see who's playing what. Up first is Cameron playing Tormod and Kodama. Now this deck synergizes a lot with graveyard strategies and landfall. In fact, it's even got the infinite combo of Kodama, the Golgari Bounce Land, and either Field of the Dead or Rampaging Baloths. Up next, we have Ethan playing Mono Red Duretti Artifacts. I'm sure many of you already know how decks like this work, but in case you don't, you essentially just dirtle around with artifact synergies until you oops into an infinite combo. Up next is our newest member of Smooth Brain EDH, Shelby playing his Marchesa the Black Rose deck. His deck is built really well around his commander. With plenty of sack outlets and ways to get 1-1 counters on his creatures, he's able to keep them around very well and get a lot of ETB and die triggers from them. And lastly, we have Chandler playing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. And luckily, this is a Super Friends build and not an Infect build. Essentially, Chandler is trying to drop as many Planeswalkers as he can, and through the help of Atraxa and other cards in his deck, he's hoping to ultimate them as fast as he can and accure enough value to lock his opponents out and win. Alright you guys, now that we know who's playing what, let's look at their hands. Cameron keeps his 7 of Tranquil Thicket, Land of War Waste, Woodland Chasm, Soul Ring, Kodama's Reach, Golgari Thug, and Damnation. Ethan keeps a hand of Two Mountains, Thought Vessel, Mycosynth Wellspring, Staff of Domination, All is Dust, and a Vandal Blast. Shelby keeps a hand of Jouar Isle Refuge, Blood Crypt, Cyclonic Rift, Plague Crafter, Judith, Warstrom Surge, and Kindred Dominance. And finally, Chandler kept a hand of Godless Shrine, Indatha Trium, Soul Ring, Coalition Relic, Oko Thief of Crowns, Ugin the Ineffable, and Elspeth Sun's Champion. Alright you guys, we've seen who's playing what, and their hands. Let's jump straight into this game. Looks like Cameron wins the die roll and plays Lanor War Waste into Soul Ring before passing to Ethan. Ethan plays a Mountain and casts Goblin Welder that he drew for turn and passes to Chandler. Chandler shocks in a Godless Shrine and taps it to cast a Soul Ring. Chandler then passes to Shelby, who plays his Jwar Isle Refuge, tapped, and gains a life before passing to Cameron. Cameron casts Kodama's Reach, taking one to his land. He finds a forest to his hand and a swamp to the battlefield tapped, and then plays Woodlum Chasm before passing to Ethan. Ethan plays a mountain and casts Thought Vessel. He then moves to combat and swings one at Cameron. He passes to Chandler after that. Chandler plays his Trium tapped and then taps for three and casts Coalition Relic. He passes to Shelby after that. Shelby plays a mountain and passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a forest, then taps for four and casts Tormod. After that, he taps for one and casts Viserys Seer. Ethan is then passed to. Ethan plays a Ghost Quarter and then casts Thran Dynamo, which he taps to cast Mycosynth Wellspring, finding a basic mountain to his hand. Ethan passes to Chandler and Chandler puts a counter on his Coalition Relic on his end step. Then on his main phase, he takes it off and makes a white mana. He then plays a Flooded Strand and then taps for six to cast Elspeth Sun's Champion and upticks it to make three 1-1 soldiers. He passes to Shelby after this. On his turn, Shelby plays an Island and then taps for two to cast Rakdos Signet. He passes to Cameron after that. Cameron immediately goes into combat and swings for four at Ethan. Four commander, that is. Cameron then plays a Swamp, and then casts Golgari Thug. He passes to Ethan after that. Ethan uses Thran Dynamo to make three mana, then casts Mindstone, floating one, and then sacrifices Mindstone, paying one, to draw a card. Ethan then activates Goblin Welder, sacrificing Mycosynth Wellspring and getting back Mindstone. He gets to search for another basic mountain, and then plays it as land for turn. He then taps for two and casts Goblin Engineer, finding a Dark Steel Forge to the graveyard. He then casts Staff of Domination. Ethan then passes and Chandler fetches on his end step. He finds his other Triumph to the battlefield tapped. On his turn, he uptakes Elspeth, making three more 1 1s, then taps for six and casts Ugin the Ineffable. He upticks it, looking at the top card of his library, exiling it, and putting it under a 2 2. He passes to Shelby after that. Shelby shocks in a Blood Crypt and then casts his commander, Marchesa. After that, he passes to Cameron. Cameron moves to combat again, swinging four more commander at Ethan. After this, he sacrifices Viserys Seer to itself and scries one. He then drops a Damnation, destroying all creatures. When Golgari Thug dies, he puts Viserys Seer back on top of his library. He then passes to Ethan. Ethan immediately casts Doretti, floats a mana with his Thought Vessel, and sacrifices it to bring back Darksteel Forge. He then taps for three more and casts Mystic Forge. He then plays a Mountain, and then passes to Chandler. Chandler decides he wants some more creatures on the board to protect his Planeswalker, so he upticks Ugin and Elspeth again. After this, Chandler casts Oko, Thief of Crowns, and Elks Ethan's Forge. 
And if there's any judges out there, we have a question for you. We know that certain cards like Mycosynth Lattice, Painter's Servant, and even Magus of the Moon keep their abilities even when they're turned into an elk. Does the same apply for Darksteel Forge? We tried to look it up, but couldn't find a definitive answer. And don't worry, based on what happens later in the game, the ruling won't be relevant, but it's nice to know for future reference. And back to the game, Chandler passes to Shelby, who plays an island and recaps as Commander. The turn is then passed to Cameron. Cameron plays Kodama, then plays a Swamp as land for turn, triggering Kodama, and then putting in a Ghost Quarter. He then crop rotations, sacrificing a Swamp, and finding Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead triggers thanks to some of his basics being Snowlands. He then recasts his Viserys here and passes to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by exiling the top part of his library and losing a life. He then upticks to ready, discarding Vandal Blast and drawing a card. After that, he plays a Mountain. And with not much else to do and his opponent's boards building up, Ethan taps for 7 and casts All His Dust. Cameron responds by sacrificing his zombie to scry one, he decides to keep it on top. And thankfully, elks are green, so the Darksteel Forge is sacrificed, and Ethan passes to Chandler. Chandler puts a counter on his relic on his end step. And on his turn, he makes a blue, then taps for three more, and casts a Traxo. He then puts a counter on his relic, and then upticks Ugin. He then casts a free Arcane Signet, thanks to Ugin's passive, and then moves to end step, proliferating his charge counter and his Ugin. On Shelby's turn, he casts a Kakusho, and then passes it to Cameron. Cameron recasts Kodama, and then shows the board his Bounce Land. When it ETBs, Field of the Dead and the Rot Farm triggers. Cameron resolves the Bounce trigger first, bouncing it back to his hand, and then the zombie comes into play. Kodama's ability triggers, and Cameron gets to repeat the process, making infinite 2-2 zombies. But in response to the first trigger, thankfully Chandler has the swords, and swords to plowshares Kodama. Cameron bounces back his Rot Farm, and hopes to try it again next turn. He passes to Ethan. Ethan plays a Phyrexia's Core, then casts a Staff of Nin before passing to Chandler. On Chandler's turn, he removes his two counters, making two blue, and then taps for three more, casting Jace and Raveler of Secrets. He upticks to opt it. He plays an island after that, then moves to combat, swinging four commander and four on the ground at Cameron. He then upticks Ugin again, and then activates Coalition Relic, putting on another charge counter. He then moves to his end step, proliferating his Planeswalkers and his Relic. On Shelby's turn, he plays a mountain and then taps for three, casting Judith. Cameron tells him not to swing at him, and Shelby responds by swinging at him. The turn is then passed to Cameron. He plays Grim Backwoods, and Field of the Dead triggers, and he gets another 2-2 zombie. He then casts Corpse Weft, and then passes to Ethan. But on his end step, Ethan draws a card with Staff of Domination. Still on end step, he exiles the top card of his library, and loses a life. And then still on end step, he deals one damage to Jace. Then, finally on his turn, he draws two off of his Staff. Then, recast Doretti, plays Valak at his land for turn, then sacrifices Mindstone to get back Darksteel Forge with Doretti's down tick. He then passes turn, and on his end step, Chandler decides to beast within Cameron's Field of the Dead. And then on his turn, he takes off the two counters of Coalition Relic, adding a white and a black. He then casts Cultivate, putting a Plains to the battlefield, and a Forest to his hand. And then decides to drop Merciless Eviction, exiling all artifacts. In response, Ethan sacrifices Darksteel Forge with Phyrexian Core. And the spell resolves. Chandler then upticks Ugin and Jace, then plays a Forest, then swings four on the ground at Shelby, and then four Commander at Cameron. They both take it. Chandler then passes to Shelby, who casts a Soul Ring, and then an Unspeakable Symbol. He then moves to combat, and swings six in the air at Cameron, and Judith at Ethan. Shelby then passes to Cameron, and Cameron on his end step activates Corpse Weft twice, exiling Viserysir and Golgari Thug, making two tapped zombies. And then on his turn, Cameron casts Exploration, then moves to combat. He swings all out at Chandler's Jace. Chandler blocks the 3-3 with Atraxa, and two 2-2s two with his 2-2s. Two but before damage, Cameron activates Grim Backwoods to sacrifice one of the blocked 2-2s, two drawing a card so Chandler can't get his Ugin card. Damage goes through, and post-combat, Cameron casts an Elvish Mystic, taking one to Llanowar Wastes. He then passes, and Ethan cycles a Forgotten Cave on his end step. And then on his turn, he upticks to ready, discarding a mountain to draw a card. And then cast Scrap Mastery, getting back all of his artifacts, including Darksteel Forge. You agree to stay away! My line! And so Ethan finds a mountain with Mycosynth Wellspring's ETB, and then plays it, dealing through to Jace with Falakid. He then casts Basalt Monolith, and then passes to Chandler. Chandler decides to start off his turn by destroying Doretti with Ugin. 
He then moves to combat, swinging a 2 2 at everyone, and then attracts it at Shelby. He then opts with Jace, and then drops a damnation of his own. Everyone is drained for 5 off Kokusho, and then Shelby points his 2 damage from Judith at Jace. And Chandler also gets the 3 exiled cards from Ugin. He then plays a Snow Island and passes to Shelby, who decides to redeploy Marchesa for 8 mana. After this, he passes to Cameron. Cameron casts Balagad Recovery to get back his Field of the Dead. But right before he plays it, he realizes Ethan has a Ghost Quarter, so decides to just pass the turn without playing it. On his end step, Ethan sacrifices Mycosynth Wellspring to find a mountain and gain a life. And so on his turn, Ethan decides to recast to ready for 8 mana. He then upticks him to discard Barrier Druin and the mountain he found to draw two cards. He then casts Ruin Grinder, and Chandler looks dead at Cameron and says, It's a May. Ethan then passes to Chandler. Chandler just uptakes Ugin and then casts Gideon, ally of Zendikar, and zeroes him. He then passes to Shelby after that. And on his turn, Shelby casts a Commander Sphere and then moves to combat. He swings Marchesa at Chandler, giving her a dethrone trigger, and Chandler just decides to take it. And then in post-combat, Shelby casts a Plague Crafter. Not wanting to discard his Field of Ruin that he just got back, Cameron responds by exiling his Lanamore Elves from his graveyard to make a tapped 2-2 zombie horror. Ethan sacrifices his Ruin Grinder, which puts a trigger onto the stack where everyone may discard their hand and draw 7 cards. In response to that, Shelby taps for 2 and casts Cyclonic Rift on Ethan's Darksteel Forge. But Ethan has a deflecting slot, and he starts deciding where he's going to change the targets. He mentions Chandler's Ugin, and Chandler starts tapping lands to bluff an Anguish done making. And so after that, Ethan decides to change the target to Cameron's Corpse Weft. And so the wheel trigger resolves, and everybody but Chandler draws a fresh 7. And so Shelby casts a Burnish Heart, and then passes to Cameron. Cameron plays a Temple of Malady, scrying one to the bottom. He then casts a Blood Artist, then a Midnight Reaper, and then a reassembling skeleton before passing to Ethan. Ethan starts his turn off by upticking to ready again, discarding two more lands to draw two more cards. He then drops a Dockside Extortionist to get five treasure tokens. He then casts Combustible Gear Hulk, targeting Cameron with the trigger. Cameron, now at a pretty low life total, just gives Ethan the draw three, because he knows that Ethan's got some big CMC spells in there that could just kill him. And Ethan drops a Forsaken Monument, which with Basalt Monolith, straight up just gives him infinite mana. Cameron says now's a good time to use that Anguished Unmaking on the Basalt Monolith. But as it turns out, it was just a bluff. And so Ethan makes infinite colorless mana. He drops a Koldolfa Forge Master, gaining two life. Then a Rings of Bright Hearth, pretty much doubling down on the infinite mana. He then uses that infinite mana to sacrifice Mind Stone, and then uses Rings of Bright Hearth's trigger to copy it, so drawing two. He then drops Ugin the Spirit Dragon, negative fouring it, exiling all permanents with color, CMC four or less. He then plays a Mountain as his land for turn, bolting Ugin with the Valakut trigger, then casts Grim Monolith, oh no, even more infinite mana. Then he recasts Doretti, he then upticks Doretti, copying it with Rings of Bright Hearth to discard two and draw two twice. And on his first discard two draw two, he finds Walking Ballista, so that's game. Hey there everybody, welcome to the end of the game. That was a pretty interesting game, huh? The table could not get rid of that Dark Steel Forge to save their lives. But hey, if you enjoyed the video today, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And go and follow us on social media as well. Links will be in the description. Same with the deck lists. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. We love having you here, and have a smooth day.